Hello. Now, continuing our work in algebra, we are going to be looking at a quick reminder on how to solve linear equations. So solving just means get stuff in the form x equals number. That's really all it ever means. Sometimes we have to go through a bit of a rigmarole to get there, but the aim is always x equals number. And that can help us anchor what we need to do. So I'm just going to solve both of these things and remind you of the steps involved or a method for the steps involved. So if I have three sitting outside a bracket uh, here, I know I need to do that multiply out. So a number sitting outside the bracket is multiplied by everything inside the bracket. That's what my blue lines remind me of. So three is going to get multiplied by X and three is going to get multiplied by two. So I have three X plus three by two is six is equal to seven. Now I don't want any pure numbers on my left hand side. I only want to have X because my final goal is to have X equals numbers. So I'm going to subtract six from both sides. Why am I going to do that? Because I have plus six, I want zero. So I'm going to subtract six because plus six minus six is zero. That leaves me with three X on the left hand side, which is closer to what I want. And I have to do the same thing on the other side to keep my equation balanced. So oh, I'm left with 3x is equal to 1. I want to know what 1x is equal to. So I need to divide both sides by 3. And when I've done that, I get x is equal to a third. And that is my job done. So anytime I have brackets or any of this type of business going on, just multiply out all of the brackets add up any like terms that as you can see to simplify things and then just start rearranging as I have here. And that's all there is to solving our linear equations, unless we have fractions involved, in which case we have a few steps to play through before we get to this stuff here. So there are a few different ways that you can be taught or that you may be familiar with with how to get rid of these fractions. But the key thing to recognize is fractions are unpleasant and we get rid of them. We do nothing really before getting rid of fractions in equations. They're always a nuisance. We always get rid of them before we try to do anything else. Now, the method I recommend you use to avoid making mistakes is find the lowest common denominator of all of your fractions, and particularly when you get into algebraic de denominators, it's important to try and factorize your denominators to spot what the lowest common denominator is going to be. It can save you a lot of multiplying out. So our lowest common denominator here would be our lowest common multiple of 2, 3, and 3. Well, we're just looking for the lowest common denominator. Lowest common multiple of 2 and 3 is 6. It's going to be 2 by 3. Those common denominator is going to be 6, so I want to get 6 underneath all of these fractions. So I need to multiply above and below here by 3, because 3 by 2 is going to give me 6. Here I need to get to 6, so I need to multiply by 2. And I must do the same thing on the top of the fraction to keep the ratio constant. Another way to look at it is 3 over 3 is 1, and I know that I can multiply any number by 1 and not change the number. So there's a few different ways of justifying why it is we can do this multiplying above and below business. The key feature, however, is that if, uh, we get the denominators all the same. So I do my multiply out here, just like I did here, and I get 3x minus 9 all over 6 minus 2x minus 10 all over 6 is equal to 2x all over 6. Next step. I want to add these two fractions together or take them away from each other. And this step should highlight why it is that I am a fan of doing this slightly longer method. So I'm going to write this as a single fraction. They're both over the same denominator. So I can just say everything's over six. And I have three X minus nine minus two X. So far, so simple. I have minus two X will be minus two X. But minus minus 10 is plus 10. I am subtracting negative 10, so I end up with plus 10. This is by far the most common way of losing three marks on the exam for this type of question. 
So we're talking three out of 10 or three out of 12 for that slip there. So a very common way of losing marks. And the reason why I prefer to write things out in this fashion is that explicitly having to add the fractions together instead of getting rid of the denominators all at once, which is a method you may have been taught, uh, is that it helps to avoid making this mistake here with plus and minus going on. Now that everything is a single fraction equals another single fraction over the same denominator, what we do is make both sides of our equation six times bigger. The argument going, if a equals b, then 6 times a must equal 6 times b, to keep the equality the same. Now, 6 divided by 6 is 1, 6 divided by 6 is 1, and we are left with 3x minus 9 minus 2x plus 10 is equal to 2x. And now we're back very much to this type of situation here where we're rearranging, and I look for what is common or what are like terms, I should say. And I'm going to put a symbol underneath each like term that I can add up, because in higher level, we can end up with a lot of algebra going on all at once. And to keep track of it with little symbols can be helpful. Now I want to rearrange this. And in this case, it's easier to get the x's on the right hand side. So I'm going to subtract x here so I get zero x's on the left. I end up with 1 is equal to x. And that's my final answer. So, key steps in situations involving fractions. Get the lowest common denominator. Get, a, uh, get everything over the same denominator. Write things as single fractions equal single fractions. And then multiply across by the common denominator to get rid of the fraction. And this should help prevent uh, making sign errors when you are trying to simplify your equations. And that's what we need for right now in solving linear equations.